academic history characterized by evolutionary leaps from its beginnings in 1986, led by a group of Manchester-based Chinese artists with a moderate base um, in Chinatown to showcase their work and establish a voice for Chinese artists in the city. Um, it has started from this to a professional arts organization leading the UK in promoting, supporting, and showcasing Chinese artists from across the globe. So Chinese Art Centre was known to be the leading organization in the promotion of contemporary Chinese art in the UK. And now, as CFCCA, we are leading the UK in exploring a changing international dynamic. This is the Chinese century, and Chinese contemporary art and visual culture is a vibrant force, basking in momentum. We are proud of our 27-year history, which have included first UK solo exhibitions, um, featuring exceptional artists that go on to have and achieve international acclaim. We work with a wide array of partners to provide people with a lively and innovative program of exhibitions, residencies, engagement programs, festivals, symposia, and events such as this one. Um, one of these partners, which I'll just touch on, um, is a partnership between CSCA and the University of Salford who we are working together to establish a new permanent collection of Chinese contemporary art. Our intention is to use the collection to increase understanding and knowledge of Chinese contemporary art, both within the sector and nationally. We launched this partnership with the University of Salford on the 11th of October um, at their media station campus. Um, this included signing a memorandum of understanding between our two organizations and a preview of our first co commission in Hazen Falk by Chow Fei, which some of you have seen. Um, if you haven't, it is on show here until the 7th of December, so you do come back and see it. Um, as CFCCA, we are uniquely based to explore the 20th century through art and the transcultural fate that will shape our future. Moving forward, we are entering these transcultural dialogues in many ways with the contribution of four associate curators, three of whom are based in mainland China and one is in Taiwan. Um, we are, they, we've asked them to produce annual reports, which we are launching via our website and via the Curating China Network. Um, so they will be launched later this week. Um, they were asked to explore four key strands. Strand number one, socially engaged practice and relational work led by Lee Kei who brings up two case studies surrounding environmental art action in Taiwan. Strand number two, work created through the influence of Chinese culture, led by Beatrice Lianza, who looks at a contemporary definition of relationality through design in Beijing. Strand number three, wider visual culture, led by Han Zhengfeng, um, who delves into an exploration of design through the lens of Weibo and Weixi. Um, and star number four, up-and-coming trends in contemporary Chinese art and artists, led by Liliana Kirik, who questions how new artistic trends, which looks at historical references, <coughs> turn into in-depth explorations. Now, last night we launched the Curating China Network, the main purpose of which is to signpost anyone interested and learning more about Chinese art and the surrounding debates, both in the UK and worldwide. We are interested in linking the many programs across the country that invest in research in this sector, collating things already in existence, as well as distributing conversations that 
are developing internationally amongst us today. And if you are interested in joining the network, um, we've asked um, everyone to leave their emails on the yellow um, sign-in sheet at the front desk. And um, what happens is, um, with your emails, we'll send you an invitation to join the network. And it's very simple and straightforward. You just have to create a WordPress account if you don't already have one, and then you can gain access to the network. Um, so please leave your email um, if you haven't done so already. Um, so now I am pleased to introduce um, Zhang Jiehong, a pivotal new member of our family, Joshua. Um, professor of Chinese Art and Founding Director of Center for Visual Art at Birmingham City University. Teaches and curates in Japan, China, which I'm sure you've heard, including major exhibitions such as the last Guangzhou Triangle. Um, Joshua will be the lead curator of our contribution um, to next year's Asia Triangle, which I'm sure he'll tell you more about. So please join me in welcoming Joshua. Um, and um, 
So this is, I don't want to go through all that, that's the, that's the, uh, there's a quote here, uh, which is saying that um, the last paragraph, responding to the 18, 2014 conflict of compassionism indeed, and increasingly the destabilized and challenging world that has already transformed uh, in terms of space, identity, and communication. And now I'm thinking that obviously there was a lot of problems that we can see already in China and mainland, and um, I'm sure that a lot of you sitting here, you use WeChat. And all the news that people <coughs> send on television, is there any positive ones or negative? So it's, it doesn't, without saying that there is a lot of problems there, and, uh, and it's interesting that um, it has been titled um, as, a, <coughs> as a matter of harmony um, in, in the society. Um, no, I think the, the next challenge is that when, I, uh, when, when, we, when we're thinking about to do this uh, exhibition, and I thought, because in the centre itself, we've got very nice gallery space, but when we're talking about contemporary Chinese art, and the, the space itself is not necessarily big enough, you know. And if, I, I'm going to um, introduce some of my colleagues to visit um, Beijing and Shanghai, and you might discover that some artist studio can be more than 1,000 square meters. Um, so, yeah, I've got um, um, an artist's actually daughter sitting here, and, um, and similarly, I mean, Ch uh, Chinese artist studio. Um, always situated in the, we call it Changxiao Jiu So it's between the city and it's rural space. And this is, this is um, I like the English words called the middle of nowhere. And, uh, and uh, they, they, they are, they are situ located in this kind of region. And it's kind of, it's not us, I won't call it isolated, but it's all connected um, between. Uh, rural space and the city between politics and culture. Um, so, um, now when I'm talking about this space, perhaps it's not big enough, um, but Sarah, um, I, uh, I always admire her ambition to, uh, to be um, so positive, and we are now proposing five or six venues across the city of Manchester. And, uh, and this is top secret actually, um, because um, this is, you are maybe the very first group to hear all that. So the venues, I, I just take another five minutes to show a few slides of the venues. And you see that, this is Transfer Center. And the next one is very exciting. I wonder what you've been here. I know that some of uh, my students that you will have a little tour at the uh, uh, Manchester City. This is the place that you need to go. This is one of the oldest library, purpose-built library in, um, in, in Manchester. The oldest in the year of 1900. And um, it built as a library. It wasn't a church. It, it looked like a church, but it is a library. Um, that's inside of the library. It's, it's just phenomenal. It's beautiful. And, um, and they are very interested in um, um, participate into um, this ATM project. The only thing that uh, we are, uh, we, we, the only challenge that we envisage is that this is, what's, what's the English word again? Um, uh, listed, listed is a great one. Any anyway, highest listed building that we can't touch the walls, but we can touch it, but we can't. <laughs> We can't put a nail, we can't, we can't do anything about it. So, um, this is the space which is very beautiful, um, and you can see that this is the main hall of the library, and this is the reading room, as you can see um, on both sides of this um, building. Now, I think I automatically were thinking about, say, for example, freestanding installation. Or another challenge is whether we can do a sound piece in a library. That's another thing. So just make sure that we are not destroying this uh, um, building, but um, trying to um, develop some site specific work uh, within that uh, venue to respond uh, to the idea of harmonious society. That's another venue that 
uh, when we close it, which is the <laughs> Google Meeting. Uh, I wonder, some of you might have been and some haven't. And we've got the, the top, uh, which is the fourth floor and the third floor, which is a gallery space. It is actually like this because they are doing this fourth wall to show that um, photographic work. And that's the, uh, the floor one below. As you can see, that this is a triangular, strange shape of architecture. So the top floor is the smallest space, and down is like slightly bigger and then bigger. So we are having the two floor spaces, um, and also the immersive, we call it immersive uh, cinema space, which is a glass space. One of my artists is already proposing something for that particular cinema. Um, then we will have a kind of, you, you can see that this, there was a, a kind of church style space, which is a library, and then moving on to the normal gallery space, including the football museum, um, and also the Chance Art Center here. And this is a warehouse space, uh, which will be like this top floor. It's more than 1,000 square meters, it's huge, but the ceiling height wasn't perfect for large installations. But it will be a very, very good space. Uh, it will be a major space for our project. So that's the third, actually the fourth space. Um, that's the UHC um, Ultimate Holding Company, our space. And this is very exciting as well. Um, do you know where is the first railway station on this planet? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I visit there. It's a, it's a very humble little uh, uh, venue. And this is the building that uh, used to be the warehouse for the, for the, for the railway equipment. Um, but just behind that building, that was the, the very first railway station. And within that building, uh, we've got a space, a beautiful space, um, that you've got a wooden original floor. Um, Again, but the problem is it's a listed building again that you can't come um, like around in, in, in the space. But this is the space that it's almost automatically can show um, video work because it's it's completely dark. It's um, it's a dark space. There's other possibilities like Islington Mill, um, beautiful space again. Um, I heard that you see that um, arching window. The window, the window. If you look down straight, the window. I mean, this is this is the boundary between Manchester and Salford. Am I right? Yeah. Thank you. Between Manchester and Salford, like two cities. And uh, this is the, uh, the the attic of this uh, uh, this um, And this is one of the very first um, uh, building which is now fireproof. Um, that will get fired or something, um, uh, architecturally, uh, which I understand. Um, but this will be another possibility. And then um, this is uh, one floor down. Um, looks, this is uh, this is this is uh, installation work by a London artist anyway. But they are showing temporary uh, work in that space. And um, I just thought this will be another possibility to show some documentary film and uh, moving images within that space. And also the thinking about church, cathedral, um, that will be uh, another interesting and different <coughs> space. And I think this, uh, the challenge of this um, project within ATM, there's two major challenges. One is that, that you, we have to envisage a variety of spaces that how to encourage and discuss with artists to uh, develop any specific work to, to be installed and to be viewed within um, those physical uh, entity. And also the second challenge is a translation issue. I've been here for 15 years and I still see myself as a foreigner. Uh, but when I'm going back to China very regularly, seven times, six, six times a year, I felt I'm a foreigner again back in China. So, I, but I never believe translation. Do you believe translation? I don't believe translation. If I if I if I write in English first, or if I write in Chinese first, it, it will be a two different text. 
because the audience will be different. And similarly, that if we curate a show in the UK, inviting artists from Hong Kong, Taiwan, and of course mainland China to produce work in the UK, what's the difference? And are they translatable? Or do we need to get them translated in a visual way? And they might get uh, misunderstanding or different set of misunderstanding because they can be misunderstood anyway in, in China as well. But it will be, uh, but we are trying to make sure that it will be, there will be, there must be some misunderstanding, but hopefully some positive misunderstanding. So this is um, a brief introduction um, for this uh, for this um, Asia trial in Manchester, and I and I would really welcome some of the students here. Yeah. Touch and, and we are we need a lot of uh, help.